Hey everybody, it's Tab from Crosscut Vintage Designs and today we're going to be taking a look at this beast behind me here. This is my brand new Sandex 26 inch dual drum sander from CWI Machinery up in Canada. We're going to be doing a quick review of this machine so stick around and check it out. So right out of the box, pretty impressed with the fit and finish on this machine and uh, the box had no damage on it from the shipper so that's always nice to see. So they packaged it very well. Out of the crate, fit and finish is great. Um, there's very little assembly on this. The only thing you need to do is to mount up your magnetic controls and your speed control on here. It's just two bolts you tighten up and then put your handle on to raise and lower the conveyor belt, hook your dust collection up, plug it in, and you're ready to rock and roll. So we'll start over here with your magnetic switch with your stop start control on it and the on off for your conveyor speed control. Uh, pretty simple setup here. This is a pretty common magnetic switch for most machines. Um, so pull the button out and hit the start button. As you can see, pretty quiet. Nice quiet machine. And then flip your switch up for your belt control. And then you can adjust your knob faster or slower to speed up or slow down the conveyor belt. So once you have the machine running, you can adjust the speed of your conveyor belt right out of the box conveyor belt tracked perfectly didn't have to have any adjustment there and the uh, speed control works very nicely very smoothly and slow it way down if you're you know sanding something uh, pretty wide or speed it up for some smaller items um, i find that the setting number eight is probably your best speed that way you're not overloading the machine now remember this is not a planer this is a sander you're using this to just put your finished sand on your pieces or parts. So just remember that, not a planer. So another great feature of the machine is its range of thickness of material that you can put through the machine. Go from 0 to 12 inches here. So you can actually fit something pretty big in here. So if you're doing a lot of box construction, anything like that, where you really need to flatten the top of something large, you got a full 12 inches of thickness here that you can go with the machine. So any of you guys out there doing veneer work, I know that uh, how thin a machine can go to is very important to you. So I just made this piece of walnut veneer and just measured it with the calipers, got down to 0 .038, so which is just a little bit over a 30 second. So machine is great for veneer work too. Got this pretty thin. show you the inside of the machine as well point out a few things to you so this right here is the dial that you use to raise and lower the back drum if you are using two different types of sandpaper so on this machine I have 120 on the front drum and 180 on the back when you have a different grit sandpaper on the back drum, you need to lower the drum just a little bit, and that's what these adjustments are for. So you can adjust this back drum up or down. And CWI is nice enough to send the wrench along that you use to adjust that with. And this is a, there's no real set uh, height that this need, thing needs to be set to. It's more you listening to the machine. Um, right now, I just have it just barely uh, maybe a thousandth down uh, from the front drum and what you're going to want to do is you're going to start to feed wood through this thing and kind of listen to the machine and listen when that back drum is also sanding as well and then that'll tell you that you've got this drum low enough so when you go from grit to grit and sandpaper they're actually a little thicker and thinner than others so let's say you did you know 80 on this drum and 120 on this drum, your adjustment's gonna be a little different uh, opposed to 180 on this drum, because 180 is thinner. So 
Um, and then it's got a pretty standard clip system on the drums here. They're pretty similar to the rest of the clips that are on some other sanders. You do want to make sure that you do have the sandpaper on here nice and tight and not moving around, so make sure you do that. This sander requires a dust collector with at least 1,250 CFM of air movement. Got two dust collection ports on top. One thing I will tell you is that if you do have a smaller dust collector, it doesn't mean that you can't use this machine. You just have to sand a little slower. Um, the slower you sand, the less material you're moving and it gives your dust collector time to remove that sawdust from the machine. These are the adjustments for the belt tracking. You either adjust these clockwise or counterclockwise to adjust the belt. Like I said, the belt came perfectly tracked from the factory, so you shouldn't have to touch these, but uh, maybe over a period of time, it might come out of a little bit of adjustment, and that's where you adjust these at. And the same Allen wrench that you use to adjust the sanding heads fits these Allen screws as well. So overall, this is a great machine. I think it works well. It so, uh, comes perfectly adjusted from the factory, so there's not really much to, you know, tune it in or anything like that. Like I said, it went together very easily. Just, you know, mount your power switch and your handle, hook it up to dust collection, and plug it in, and you're ready to rock and roll. So, great machine. Um, I look forward to using this in the future, and uh, I'll keep you updated on what I think about it.